Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael, and what I have for you today is from... <music> Lenovo. This is the ThinkPad P50. It's a classic Lenovo workstation from about four years ago that houses an Intel Skylake series Core i7 and NVIDIA Quadro GPU. Modern notebooks without dedicated GPUs, like the IdeaPad S340 I just reviewed, will set you back about $550 to $750, which is about the same amount you'll pay for one of these old bad boys. Is it worth trading modern hardware for something that's broken in? Let's find out. This, then, is the Lenovo ThinkPad P50. This particular unit houses the Intel Core i7-6820HQ CPU from a few years ago that's still a quad-core hyper-threaded proc with 8 megabytes of L3 cache that runs up to 3.6 gigahertz. It's mated to the NVIDIA Quadro M2000M workstation GPU with 4 gigs of GDDR5 memory. This notebook shipped with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and a 256 gig SATA M.2 SSD. These bits all rest under a 15.6 inch 1080p matte IPS display and are juiced by a removable 6 cell 90 watt hour lithium polymer battery. According to a Windows 10 battery report, after four years of life and however many in storage, there's still 86% of full capacity left. That's not bad, considering brand new batteries are available for just $50 anyway. With this 85% efficiency, the battery keeps the electric blood pumping for just over five hours during internet work use and just over an hour while gaming. Expect a little bit more life out of a fresh battery. Overall, this configuration ran me just over 600 bucks on eBay. You can save some coin if you want by getting a P50 with the lesser M1000M GPU. If you want to see how that configuration works, check out my review of the HP ZBook Studio G3 in the top right corner. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right we have the headset in, two USB 3.0 ports, mini display port, an air intake, and the lock slot. The back is where we'll find a vent, two USB 2.0 ports, Gigabit LAN, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI, that which receives the wall juice, and another vent. On the left side we can see the other air intake, express card slot, and an SD card reader. So basically it has all the holes a portable PC user could ever dream of. And if it doesn't game well enough, you can double your investment and connect an external GPU if you're into that kind of thing. The only thing that's really missing here is an external mic input. The top of the notebook has the typical ThinkPad rubber finish that is super comfortable to hold, but also wears over time in the worst ways possible. Expect the top of your notebook to look like this too if you buy it used off eBay or Amazon. It's scratched, it's worn, it's stained, but at least you're not looking at it while you're using it. Still, as a testament to how the rest of the notebook holds up over the years, the keyboard looks brand new, as does the touchpad. Surrounding those peripherals is sturdy plastic that flexes a little bit under stress, but overall feels sturdy. Don't expect this beast to be light though. It'll wear on your shoulder after a small amount of time, especially if it's in a bag with the power adapter. Speaking of which, it's a brick with a standard yellow rectangular connector. What I received is a small from the wall cord which only yields a total of 7 feet, but with a longer from the wall cord you can expect to better practice social distancing from the plug. The bottom cover comes off after unfastening six screws that don't come out. Under the hood we can see that there are still two empty RAM slots for a super easy memory upgrade, but we don't have access to the heat pipe assembly or Wi-Fi card. The M.2 SATA drive can be swapped out after tearing the perforated cover, and there's a big hole where a 2.5 inch drive can sit. Much to my dismay, there's no caddy and not even a SATA connection. Where there would be one is covered with stickers. This must have been a corporation's way of making sure their employees wouldn't mess with the hard drive configuration. I would assume that the seller you're buying from won't know if this is the case or not for their item, so good luck. Like I said before, the keyboard keys themselves have held up well physically over the years. Otherwise, it takes a pretty firm click to reliably press a key, so my quick light typing style ends up missing a few strokes here and there. The tone of the keys is very muted and will never give a bothersome presentation, but I don't know if it's just me or the age of the notebook, but left shift is very noisy. Since right shift doesn't have the same issue, I'm going with the age thing. Not a lot to complain about otherwise, the numpad has a double wide zero key, dedicated page scrolling keys are present and accounted for, the hotkey functions on the F keys are reversible, and the white backlight has two brightness levels. 
Oh, there's also the staple function key where control ought to be, but that'll never change on ThinkPad, so don't fight me, internet? On another note, when I first got this laptop, the keyboard made a beeping noise whenever I pressed certain key combinations. A link to the video that helped me solve this issue is in the description below. The touchpad is not half bad after I unchecked Enhance Pointer Precision. At the medium sensitivity setting, it doesn't get in my way while typing, and there are, alleluia, physical keys. And three of them to boot. And there's a nub with other physical keys. Double alleluia. And after four years, the nub still works great. I can't really say anything bad about the touchpad because if there's something about it you don't like, there's a six menu deep system of configuration for it, so if you've got a problem with the acceleration or how it clicks on the edges, there's a way to fix it. The display for the P50 is quite good. The IPS screen keeps the color stable at every angle, but it does let the brightness slip at a close angle, so if you're tilting the screen to avoid a light in the background, you'll have to raise the brightness to keep comfy. As far as contrast, the blacks stay black against bright whites, and colors themselves lean towards normal and a little dull, as opposed to saturated and poppy. I could compare the screen to the Electronics Mech 15's color blaster, but that wouldn't be fair. It's nice enough to use with Photoshop, but not nice enough to work with Photoshop. In other news, it gets just over comfortably bright and one tick below comfortably dim in a pitch black room. For outdoor use, cloudy days will be your friend, sunny days still your nemesis. And for those gamers out there, ghosting is still apparent, but not more than average. The speakers on this notebook get the job done. The volume doesn't impress, but it can fill a room with a flat equalizer and no software interference. The bass tones reach pretty far down, but not that far. The opening bass line from Rage Against the Machine's Calm Like a Bomb is very present and full, while the deep bass from A Perfect Circle's The Package is audible, but still weak. The heavy guitar parts hit, but like a sissy punch that stings for only a minute or two. Still, consuming media is fun, and you won't be itching to use headphones if none are available. This is a test of the webcam here on the Lenovo ThinkPad P50. This is excellent lighting right now. I've got three LED lights right here. I've got one LED light on this side, and the motion is pretty nice. Again, it is only 720p, and the audio is actually coming through quite nicely from the microphone. And this is a test of the webcam in poor lighting. I only have one halogen bulb on this side, plus some monitors and whatever and whatnot shining on my face. But as you can see, it's dropping frames in the capture, but the color definition is not too terribly blocky or distorted, which is quite nice. System performance on this Lenovo workstation leaves little to be desired thanks to the SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. Shortcomings in performance don't rear their ugly head until you dive into intensive tasks like video editing or modeling. Keep in mind the included Core i7-6820HQ has 8 megabytes of cache compared to 6 megabytes in the more plebeian 6700HQ and even the next year's 7700HQ. Plus, with vPro and trusted execution technology, there's nothing this mobile CPU can't do that a desktop can. Just don't expect it to do anything as fast as a modern desktop CPU. On a related note, expect the hard drive light to drive you f crazy. It's big, it's an icon, and it's constantly blinking in your face. Constantly. You'll either learn to ignore it, or learn how ironic it will be to Google Black Whiteout. Speaking of the hard drive, I wish I would have known this particular example had such nerfed storage options. The ThinkPad P50 is obviously more than capable of stashing multiple 2.5-inch drives, so to see the extra ports missing entirely is incredibly disappointing. On to gaming. It's not great, not even good, but capable. The included Quadro M2000M delivers frame rates much like the GTX 870M of the same generation, so well below the modern GTX 1050. It's more like the modern GT 1030 you'll find in desktops. 
Modern intensive games like PUBG or Shadow of the Tomb Raider will struggle in 1080p, and you'll have to lower the res to 900p or even 720 to get a smooth experience. More scalable games like Blizzard's offerings will do 1080p in ease in high, but not ultra or extreme details. And older games like Ukulele, Kingdoms of Amalur, or Counter-Strike Go will have no problems in 1080p with either everything turned on or maybe a couple settings turned down. I'll have more examples in future videos. In other news, the fans will never reach an uncomfortably loud noise level, the CPU temps stay cool in more GPU-heavy games, and the ThinkPad doesn't fear gaming on battery power, so expect near full performance when off the plug, where, as stated previously, you'll be able to game for just over an hour. As far as temps go, the CPU will never throttle, and you'll get tired of the weight of this beast on your lap before the heat. For the bottom line, is the ThinkPad P50 still a viable option in today's world, especially with the new AMD 4000 CPUs that were just released? Sure. This ThinkPad costs hundreds less than those notebooks, and still provides more than enough performance if we're not talking about playing games. Not to mention the upper-class creature comforts you can't find on modern machines in the same price range. That is, if you don't mind the bulk. If I could give one line of advice for buying a used ThinkPad, it would be get one with a platter hard drive or that clearly states it has a 2.5-inch SSD. It'll be a cheaper way to go, and you won't get much more performance without 4X PCIe capability, so you might as well aim for that 2.5-inch SATA SSD. A second line of advice would be forget using Lenovo's recovery software to reinstall Windows 10 Pro. Just get it from Microsoft. Everything will download automatically and run great. You're welcome. In conclusion, students get a thumbs up, but only one. It's embarrassingly heavy. Also, your classmates with Apple machines will scoff at you, but not because you're brandishing an inferior product, just that you're carrying something that dares threaten their inclusive ecosystem. Go you. Casual gamers can totally go for this. It's cheap, plays games, and comfortably so. The performance suffers compared to brand new machines with less, well, okay, well, more like equivalent now Core i5 and Ryzen CPUs, and mid-tier GPUs like the GTX 1050 or Radeon 560X that handily best the Quadro M2000M, but they're cheaply built with subpar peripherals. I'll let you decide where your preferences lie. Of course, if you do 3D modeling on the side, then the ThinkPad is a clear winner. Competitive gamers can f*** off. AAA games from the last couple of years suck anyway. Desktop replacement users will be more than happy with this package, if you're okay with par performance. In case you were wondering, even with using just the dedicated Quadro for all video, the mini display port still drops frames like every other notebook I've tested. Gaming performance doesn't suffer though, like it does on even the Electronics Mech 15 with its RTX 2060, so that's a bonus. Yay! Home users should shy away just for the bulk of the thing. It's a pain to cart around, it doesn't fit everywhere, and, well, that's it, really. Except that the colors are boring, it's all black, and the display is as usably dull as a 1996 Toyota Camry wagon. I mean, ThinkPads come with prestige. If you're using one, you mean business. And it has a nifty little red dot that lights up off the back of it. Gotta give props to the red dot. This has been a review of the Lenovo ThinkPad P50 here on Thieges Notebook Review. If you like the review, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, click the subscribe button. If you dislike the review, I don't know, click the X button? Thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.